Hi everyone, and welcome again to another, the go-to place to learn about business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. Many thanks to our current Patreon supporters and YouTube members for making this video possible, and we'd also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us as well, so please click the link in the description or click the join button below for more details. My name is Saba, and today we are investigating quite an important concept in performance evaluation, portfolio management, and financial mathematics, that is, the statistics of sharp ratios. Sharp ratios are quite a common and famous techniques to evaluate the risk-adjusted performance of a portfolio or an asset, and very often a very practical need arises to measure whether the performance of some fund over the market or another fund is statistically significant according to the sharp ratio and while it's quite straightforward how to model the statistical significant differences in returns for sharp ratios as those are well ratios the idea is much less straightforward and today we'll tackle the first most simple approach developed by Andrew La in 2002 in his famous financial analyst journal paper that uh, tackles the statistics of sharp ratios if returns are independent and identically distributed and will use the procedure developed by Lowe and apply it to the returns of one of the most famous uh, S&P 500 tracker funds which is the SPDR S&P 500 tracker fund and here we've got monthly total return indices from February 1993 until May 2022 and we'll see whether our sharp ratio of such an investment would beat a particular annual sharp ratio target for example 0.4 we'll use the current one year annual risk free rate because we are concerned with annual investments just for the sake of the argument and uh, we'll compute our sharp ratios on a monthly frequency then we'll discuss how to scale them up to annual frequencies and perform the statistical significance testing as suggested by Lowe in 2002. First of all, we need to deal with log returns here as the procedures involved uh, assume that you can add returns together without scaling them using any other uh, more complicated method that accounts for continuous compound nature. So here, the most consistent way would be to use log returns instead of simple returns. So we calculate the natural logarithm of the ratio for consecutive total return indices that takes into account dividends already automatically, so we don't have to worry about that, and calculate monthly returns for the full sample. Then, as we're dealing with the monthly frequency, we need to convert our annual risk-free rate into a monthly risk-free rate. Well, as we're dealing with log returns here, we can simply calculate the natural logarithm of 1 plus the annual risk-free rate and divide it by 12, giving us a monthly a log risk-free rate of 0.17%. Then we can count the number of observations using the count function that would come in handy for our uh, statistics. Uh, and for the standard error calculations. Now we can calculate our average monthly return. We can just use the average function here as log returns to conform to this particular procedure and get an average monthly log return of 0.77%. Then we can calculate our monthly volatility using a sample standard deviation function. And finally, convert our monthly return and monthly risk into a monthly sharp ratio by first computing an, an excess return subtracting the risk for rate that's our numerator and our denominator is monthly volatility which gives us a sharp ratio at the monthly frequency of 0 0.1384 however there is a very common tendency to use annualized sharp ratios and what law showed if returns are independent and identically distributed is that we can scale sharp ratios for a particular number of months q as the square root of q times the sharp ratio we have obtained for a monthly frequency this also works if you are doing it daily and annual or weekly and monthly the only thing that we need to take care of is q how many periods are there in a larger period or even a smaller period that also works the idea here and why the square root emerges in this calculation is because the numerator of the sharp ratio which is a return scales linearly with time and here it's important that we selected log returns as they indeed scale just linearly with time 
a five year log return is on average five times higher than annual log return and so on and so forth. However, the denominator, which is volatility, scales as a square root because variance of a sum of independent and identically distributed variables is just n times the number of those variables and the standard deviation, which is the square root of the variance, would be scaling as a square root of n, where n is the number of variables. And here we can conceptualize our return generating process as a sum of independent and identically distributed variables. So the standard deviation of a log return over a pretty long period of time can be just calculated as the square root of however many periods we have got times the standard deviation of an individual period return. And that, as our numerator scales linearly and our denominator scales a square root, results in a ratio scaling as a square root as well. So it means that we have got an annual sharp ratio target of 0.4. Our monthly sharp ratio target would be the annual target divided by the square root of 12, as there are 12 months in a year. If we want to convert weekly into annual, the factor is 52. If we do daily into monthly, the, the common factor is 21, the number of trading days in a month. And if we do daily into annual, the very common, perhaps the most well-known factor is 252, as that's how many trading days in a year there are, at least in the US and in most European countries. So now, having calculated our observed sharp ratio estimator and our target, we can rigorously test whether our sharp ratio reliably exceeds our target. And to do that, we can calculate the standard error of the sharp ratio using this particular procedure. That shows that the higher the sharp ratio is, the more error, the more noise there is in the measurement of the ratio, which is quite uh, understandable and intuitive. And it's inversely related to the sample size because the greater uh, the sample size, the greater the number of observations, the more precisely we can estimate the sharp ratio. So here we have got 351 observations and our sharp ratio is 0 0.1384. So the standard error is the square root of the ratio of one plus a half times monthly sharp ratio squared. We divide it by the number of observations 351, close the parentheses and get a sharp standard error of 0 0.0536. Then we can apply the usual t-tests to determine the significance of our performance. For example, we can say, uh, let's subtract our target from the observed sharp ratio and divide by the standard error. How many standard errors away from the target are we? And we have got a t-statistic of 0 0.43 and we can plug it in the two-tailed t-distribution, the absolute value of the statistic, and as the number of degrees of freedom, we input the number of observations minus two as we impose two constraints, the mean and the standard error, as usual getting a p-value of 66.9%, meaning that it's very likely that our outperformance of the target has been just due to the random chance alone. If we were to pick a higher target, like 0.6, then our test would show that the underperformance below the target, well, an annual target of 0.6 is equivalent to a monthly target of 0.17, it's also um, quite unreliable simply because the standard error is higher than the underperformance that we have documented. However, if we want to test, for example, whether our strategy does deliver risk premium, so for example, whether our sharp ratio is uh, reliably above zero, then the test would show that surely at a very high level of statistical significance, p-value below 5%, and a t-statistic above 2.5, our sharp ratio is reliably greater than zero, which is quite an intuitive implementation of the law 2002 test. However, it suffers from quite substantial limitations. First of all, law acknowledges that this only works if returns are independent and identically distributed. If we do allow for autocorrelation or conditional heteroscedasticity, the procedure would be more complicated and we would need to use uh, more sophisticated formulae to calculate our standard errors for the sharp ratios. And uh, one of the most common methods to tackle such limitations to make our method less assumption sensitive 
is to use bootstrapping, which we'll cover in the next video. However, as for now, that's all there is for the simplest parametric test of evaluating the statistical significance of sharp ratio deviations. Please leave a like on this video if you found it helpful. In the comments below, I'm eager to see any further suggestions for videos in business, finance, or economics you would like me to record. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel or consider supporting us on Patreon. Thank you very much, and stay tuned.